Good morning, big family. Hey, it is, uh, today's Thursday. Happy Thursday morning. Uh, I just got up not too long ago. Sorry <laughs> about the appearance. It is what it is. I'm having a lovely breakfast of oatmeal and apples with butter and sugar and all the good things that makes oatmeal delicious. Mm. And of course, breakfast is not complete until you have a wonderful cup of Creole Brew. I'm telling you, I highly, highly recommend Creole Brew. I know it's more expensive than coffee, but oh, I love it. It's so good. <sighs> yeah. Now my morning has started. Now it's good. Mm. So what shall we do today, big family? What's on the agenda? What's on the list today? What do y'all think we should get done? I definitely have to go check on the greenhouse. I have to go check on the plants. I haven't checked on them in too many days to admit to. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I've got to see what's still alive and what's not. Y'all see Shadow? Little Chateau? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's Shadow Cat. We call him, his nickname is Chateau. Because he's so, he's so fancy and so spoiled and so prissy. We call him Chateau. Even though his name is Shadow. <laughs> And little Jack baby, the little black and white kitty Jack is snuggled up in the little house in the tower. You know, the cat tower has a little house, a little cubby hidey hole, and he is snuggled up in that hidey hole just cleaning his paws, and it is too cute. So the other thing I need to do today is to put away Christmas stuff into the attic. You'll notice that Shadow is sitting on top of a Christmas box, a Christmas tree box, and there's totes, there's big, you know, giant totes with lids that are full of Christmas decorations, full of Christmas stuff. Needs to all go back up to the attic, but I require my husband's help to do so. <clears throat> so, said husband right now is at the gym working out, getting those muscles going. So, um, when he gets back, he's going to help me, hopefully. <laughs> if he doesn't have too much other stuff going on, he's going to help me get all this Christmas stuff up back into the attic. Um, the other thing that I want to do today on the agenda... The other thing I want to do today on the agenda is to clean off the shelves in the laundry room, y'all, because let's be real... We're going to need some space. We're going to need a lot of space for all of the dog things. So we, we're a little bit stretched thin right now. <laughs> House full of dogs. I think we're at 12 now, 12 dogs. House stretched thin. So we're going to need uh, room and we're going to need space for all the um, brushes and medications and uh, different things that we, we just need shelf space for for them um, and all of the things that go with their care. So I'm going to have to clean off the shelves in the laundry room. Now that's a big undertaking. There's a lot of junk and stuff on those shelves in the laundry room. We've just accumulated stuff over the past year. Some of it's tools, some of it's farm stuff. It just needs to go elsewhere. It needs to find a different place because those metal shelves in the laundry room are going to be really helpful when it comes to running the shelter in our house. Another thing I might do if I have time is make bread. I might whip up a a loaf of bread, that sounds lovely, to warm the house and get everything smelling like a baked goodie in here. I do have a final few more strips of weed fabric to put down in my potage. I need to work on that. It kind of took a back burner. It's kind of been left by the wayside because the animals took priority, but I am going to get back out there. I'm going to get back out there in the potage and into the garden and start preparing because spring is upon us. Spring is right, right around the corner. So I need to put down those last few layers of weed fabric. I need to plan out a few more beds and see, am I just going to do flowers and herbs? Are we actually going to get some veggie, veggies going in the spring? Um, which would be lovely if we could have just a few bed of veggies. Not like an entire massive field of veggies that's not going to fill up the whole front yard. But I'm talking about a few little raised beds that I can piddle with. Because the animals are taking up a lot of our time. The shelter needs manpower you know I have to I have to wake up and feed the dogs and medicate the dogs and tend to the dogs and walk the dogs and it takes a lot of time and effort and energy so gardening kind of does fall by the wayside sometimes but I would like to have a few beds of veggies and some flowers and herbs in my little side kitchen garden that would be lovely and Wes will help me with all that so we'll get it done another thing I've kind of like not been neglecting but I've kind of thrown to the wayside a little bit is my goats. I'm going to need to tend to my goats a little bit. I'm going to need to spend some time on them and brush them and pamper them and talk to them. My goats and I haven't had our therapy session in a while and they're, they're fussing about it. So I need to go talk to all the babies and pet on the babies and 
and just check their hooves and look over them, make sure nothing's, you know, amiss. You gotta, you gotta check goats. They will not tell you when something's wrong. Goats will not let you know until it's like really bad, until it's too late. So you gotta check them. They're like, they're like kind of like kids in that regard. They're kind of like toddlers, you know, they won't let you know that something's wrong. They'll just keep running and playing and running and playing until they finally just fall out. <laughs> And then something's wrong. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to have a look over, just make sure everybody's happy and healthy and strong. I need to spend time talking to my goats and singing to them. Mr. Charlie, I found you. I found Charlie. I found this wee sweet. That's a good Charlie. Oh, Charlie has enjoyed the laundry room. He is not brave enough yet to come venture out and join all the other kitties on the cat tower and the cat wall. He just likes to hide in the laundry room and that's okay. If you need to hide and you need a minute and it makes you feel safe in here, then that's okay. He was the one that the gentleman had an outdoor cat, a barn cat, and he wanted someone to take it off his hands for some reason. He couldn't keep it or, you know, didn't want it anymore. And they knew I had barn cats and they wanted to give me another barn cat. I brought him home and got him out of the, out of the cage and I was going to kind of slowly introduce him outside to our barn cats. And when he came out of that cage and started snuggling on me and loving on me and he seemed to enjoy the indoors so much, I was like, that's not a barn cat. <laughs> that is not an outdoor cat. I just got given another indoor cat. <laughs> I got taken for a ride there. I see what happened. I see what happened, but that's okay. That's okay. Taking an, another indoor cat is not a problem. We have plenty of space for indoor kitties. I love this cat. He's already neutered and had plenty of his shots. Um, so he's a, he's a sweet boy and I think he's going to fit right in with our other cats. So we just got given another cat and I love him. I love Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, my baby. Charlie's mega boy, yeah. Y'all act like y'all know what's coming right now. <laughs> y'all are so loud. My goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, y'all act like y'all know what's coming. Y'all see this and y'all know. Y'all just automatically know what I'm about to do, huh? Yeah. Y'all know. 
I hope y'all can hear me over those chattering geese and chickens. So they all saw the brush and they all just kind of accumulated around me. I've got goats around my feet right now. So another thing is if I don't continue to brush them constantly, they will play with the camera and knock down the camera. I think I've got y'all set up right here in a good strategic location so they can't mess with y'all too much. But if I don't continue to give, especially Henry and some other greedy ones, some attention, they'll knock that camera right over. <laughs> So as I brush these goats and give them their love love for the day, I wanted to talk to y'all about something. Um, I don't know if y'all do this at y'all's house, but we have a kind of a unwritten family rule thing that we do that I, I instituted this early on. Um, I haven't enforced it a lot lately and I need to enforce it more, but it's an unwritten family rule that says that you cannot present me with a problem or an issue that you're having without presenting me with some sort of a solution or an option for a solution to that problem. Now what this does, think about that psychologically for a second. Now what that does is it causes a child or a spouse or any person you're talking to, a friend or anybody, to like actually have to think and actually use their creative mind to come up with some sort of an answer to their own problem or an answer that you could help them to uh, carry out. You know, they, they come up with the solution and then they try to work it out in their head of how I can reach a solution to this problem. Now, it may not be a good solution. It might not be the right answer and that's okay. I'm not, I never asked my kids to come up with a perfect solution. Their version of a solution when they were younger was probably not realistic, <laughs> not by any means realistic, but if they come up with some sort of a, a problem solving uh, equation here, that helps them in life. Like it helps all of us, even us adults, it helps all of us to think something through, to uh, try to process that all the way through to completion, to try to think outside the box, to try to come up with our own answer or to come up with an answer that other people can fill in the gaps of what you need. You know, if I get this person to help me with this. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. This person helped me with this and this person helped me with this. They connect the dots and get themselves to the end of the maze, so to speak. It just, you know, it, it uses the neurons, right? It gets the brain functioning and it's just really helpful. <laughs> really helpful and good, especially for children, especially in their development. So also what it does for me, I love you. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. He's currently not in rut, thank goodness. He doesn't like smell like pee everywhere. He's currently smelling better. <laughs> Smells a little less funky, so I'm okay with like getting a little closer to him, getting a little more snuggly. But what it does for me as a mama and as a woman and as a busy person and a homemaker and a uh, honey <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> What it does for me is that it helps me to de-stress. It helps me to not feel like, <laughs> to feel like absolutely everybody is running on top of me with problems and coming to me with all their problems and their issues. It helps me to feel a little more in control, a little more um, calm and stable and less stressed because <laughs> there's two of them now, they're competing feels like I'm not uh, trying to uh, trying to have to come up with all of these solutions for everybody. I'm not the solution machine, the solution factory, trying to pump out all these solutions to everybody's problems and solve everybody's issues. And everybody gets to dump their worries on me and no one's helping me come up with any solutions, you know? So the weight and the pressure is not all on the mama and the homemaker, you know what I mean? So that became... A, an, that became an unofficially instituted family rule around here. If you come to me with a problem or an issue, you have to help me to solve it. You have to present me <laughs> with some sort of a possible solution. Present me with an idea of maybe how you think we can go about this. Let's brainstorm together. Let's figure this out. You know what I mean? So that, that really works for us. It really works for my kids, um, they might get frustrated with it for a minute and say, well, I don't know. I don't have anything. I don't have a solution. And they might be frustrated for a minute. But if you calm them down, give them a drink, give them a drink of water and a cookie or something, like give them a snack and sit them down at the table and say, okay, just breathe. Just breathe. Okay. 
here's your problem that you presented me with. Let's think about this. What do you think we could do to try to help you with this? You know, and um, so once they calm down, it really becomes like a family exercise, like a team building skill here. It really does help. So in the workplace, I've noticed at work or with coworkers and friends and people you socialize with, they do the same thing. They want to present you with all these problems, but then you could turn around and ask them and say, okay, what do you think we should do about that? Or, okay, what do you think is a good solution for that? Can you help me come up with a solution? You know, so it's not all on you. You can be the helper and the guide, but it's not always on you to be Miss Fix-It or Mr. Fix-It. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to give you all that food for thought today. That's y'all's food for thought that y'all can mull around and think over today. Psychologically, what would de-stress your mind, help others to help you, help yourself, and then you're also aiding them in their ability to uh, problem solve and be creative. <laughs> and since these roosters are not letting me talk very much, I'm gonna continue with the brushing all around the circle and get all these guys all pampered and brushed and I'll stop talking. <laughs> Big marshmallow man. Henry, don't play with the camera. Henry. 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 Oh, goodness. Marshmallow is Missy's lovey for some reason. They have like bonded almost like a mated pair. And I swear when Missy goes, Marshmallow is just going to like die of loneliness and heartache. I swear because that is like his chosen goat. He has just bonded with her. They are the two oldest goats that we have. The last of the elders. And they're the, I call them the elder goats. And they're wise and calm and they lead the herd and they're just a team. They're a perfect team. And he loves her. He snuggles all over her so much. <laughs> Henry is using Marshmallow's horn to scratch his face. <laughs> he is using his horn to itch him someone. <laughs> you are so spoiled. This is the most spoiled baby ever. Big old spoiled baby.
Y'all, my container plants outside are all looking really good still. Nothing died, I don't think. I think everything's still alive. Everything looks green and healthy. I know the mint lived. Mint can live through an atomic bomb, but I'm pretty sure the bay leaf tree lived. I can see a couple of leaves on it and some greenery in those twigs. Let's go check out the greenhouse. Let's see how my little plants fared. Oh, everything does need water. Yeah, that's for sure. Everything needs a good watering, but there is a lot of stuff still alive in here. That's crazy. Oh, cauliflower got hit bad. I don't think it's going to live. That's okay. That's okay if some stuff died. Some stuff still lived. All right. Let's get everything watered. Good morning, big family. So, um, Wes and I are Good on morning. another adventure today. <laughs> and guess Nothing where we're crazy, going? Though. Nothing crazy, though. It's good. It's good. We're on another adventure out to the Clark County Animal Shelter. We're going out there because we saw a post they had on a particular puppy that is kind of our specialty. Well, not a puppy. Yeah. Definitely not I, a puppy. I call all dogs a puppy. You know, if it's, if it's a dog, it's a puppy. You know, just like a, a, a sweet cat is a kitty. You know, but um, all dogs are puppies to me. But we're going out there specifically today because we saw this post, this ad that she had for this uh, elderly beagle, which is kind of our specialty now it's kind of a it's becoming the older a, dogs yeah, yeah they're not going to get adopted yeah the the thing that we're interested in or the thing that we're <clears throat> most after that's our goal is mostly to provide that last stop you know that retirement yeah, sanctuary, home yeah. sanctuary retirement home for these elderly dogs the ones with disabilities the ones that are not adoptable the ones that have you know just old and have too many issues and nobody's going to adopt this dog nine-year-old beagle neutered male probably heart, high heartworm positive, you know, our specialty. So we're going to see about this little beagle and I think we can pull it today. So when we pull an animal that's, oops, sorry, the road's bumpy guys. <laughs> when we pull an animal, it's one shelter to another. One shelter goes out and pulls an animal from another shelter or the, um, or the rescue or the pound or whatever. It's just, you know, they pull an animal and they take it to their sanctuary or their rescue. So that's what we're doing. Basically, we're just pulling this animal from them and taking it to our shelter just to help offload the weight off of them and because that's what we want to do we want to take care of these elderly puppies yep. <laughs> but if any of y'all need elderly if you're looking for a calm docile yeah, if you're looking animal, for that, yeah message us let us know because um because when we pull these animals we're trying to provide sanctuary for them but only because there's nowhere else for them to go right right but we're not we're not doing it because we want 50 retirement dogs we would love for them to all have good loving homes right so if you're looking for a calm dog we try to make sure every animal that we have before he goes out is going to be healthy uh so you know you wouldn't have to worry about any of that but right. but if you're interested in a calm mm -hmm. low-key just, just happy easy, healthy yeah. easy going retirement a dog, dog that sleeps all know. day yeah. you know and like i said we would take care of all of its health uh issues and problems as best we can before we would adopt it out to anybody but some people are okay with that some people are are okay with the fact that they're only going to own this dog for a few years and then it's going to pass away because it is in its final stage of life it's in its elderly yeah. years it's just giving it a good home yeah like and some people yeah. are looking for that. Some people yeah. are probably in the, uh, an elderly phase of their life as well, and they're looking for an elderly companion yeah. dog. Or um, so, if that's what you're looking for, if that's your speed, and you want the the later in life dog, that's that's kind of what we're aiming for. That's what we want to help out with. That's what we want to provide a home for. So that's why we're going to get this uh, beagle today. So we're headed to the shelter. <laughs>
as we say goodbye to the shelter, you'll notice that we don't have a dog with us. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. There's a very good reason for that. Um, they called the director and, and let her know that we were, you know, here for interested in Boyd and ready to pull Boyd for them. That's the name of the dog, by the way. His name is Boyd, um, the nine-year-old male beagle. And let her know that um, we were ready to pull him. And she said, oh, there's a, actually another shelter that's interested in him. That's and another rescue, uh, another rescue. And there was a person there actually asking about him that was interested in possible adoption. So Boyd may actually get a family. He may get adopted. And I was like, oh, no, that's the best news. That's good news. So it's a good thing that we don't have Boyd with us today. It's for mm -hmm. a good reason. Yep. So we're going to let them. Uh, work that out and he'll either get a family or he'll go to the other rescue and they said um, if it all falls through and if neither one of those work out they will call us and let us know and then we'll come back and get little Boyd but um, that is the the best case scenario that he found yeah, a that's family really really good that's best case yeah. so I'm happy about that and I got a date out with my lovey I got time yeah. out with my lovey went and had lunch together uh -huh. went and did a little shopping together so now I'm headed back home to drop him off to do some editing and mm -hmm. I've got to take Avery to her dermatologist uh, appointment. So yeah, let's go back and get back get to the grind. Running, running. Get back on it. Okay, on our way back from the appointment with Avery, which went really well by the way, yep. on our way back from the dermatology appointment and we got a few things from Facebook. We did a, a Facebook shopping score real quick while we were way yep. out in a big city like Tuscaloosa. I was like, I gotta check Facebook, right? So what we get, Avery? We got three baby gates yeah. and a big, big dog bed. <laughs> giant sized dog bed that I hope Moo Moo will love or any of our you know larger dogs will love and three baby gates that are going to help us a lot with managing these dogs and separating them and holding some dogs back from flying out the door sometimes. It gets a little hairy guys with 12 dogs it gets a little hairy so baby gates you know baby gates. <laughs> so now we're headed home for the uh, rest of the evening to commence. We're going to have some dinner. We're going to have some chill time. Live on the family a little bit and get ready to start our day. Love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.